So molecular compounds are compounds that are formed by elements coming together and sharing electrons in a covalent bond. Okay, now some other elements like metals and nonmetals, because of what we call their great electronegativity difference, they don't just share electrons, they transfer them from one to another. And that's generally, of course, from the metal to the nonmetal. Why is it, of course? Because on the periodic table, the metallic ions, and you'll be given a chart that has these charges uh, on them, they generally have, metals do, a positive charge. Now, a positive charge means this, that they want to lose electrons. So you see, sodium, which is element number 11 on the periodic table, has, because it's in group one of the periodic table, it has one valence electron. And valence just means the outermost electron. And what's it going to do with that one valence electron? Well, it will donate that electron and lose it to something that wants to gain it. Now, we'll talk about reduction oxidation chemistry later, too, and really get into that. But right now, here's what you need to know. That Na is a positive because it loses an electron. That means that in the nucleus, we've got 11 protons still for sodium, but now it's only got 10 electrons. 11 positives, 10 negatives gives you a total charge of one positive. That's what sodium likes to form, a positive one ion. Well, who's it going to lose that electron to? Well, in this instance, in this case, let's say it loses it to the chloride ion. Now, chlorine is an element that says, hey, I will take that one valence electron and add it to the seven that I've got, because it's in group seven of the periodic table, and I will be able to then be more stable. Just like sodium gets more stable by losing an electron, chlorine will become more stable by gaining an electron, so its charge on the periodic table is negative one. And don't be calling these pluses and minuses because it's not addition and subtraction we're doing. It is positive charge and negative charge. So here's the deal. Sodium says, I can lose one electron. And chloride says, or chlorine says, well, I'll gain one electron. So what do we get? We get that exchange of electrons in a one-to-one -one ratio. And so the compound is quite simply called sodium chloride. Remember, all lowercase and ends in I, sodium chloride. Now, when we have something like lithium, and it's coming together with oxygen, oxygen likes to take two electrons for every one electron that lithium wants to lose. Now, some people say, well, just switch the charges and go here and here. Yeah, but do you understand what you're doing? That's the point, right? Here's the thing. Lithium says, I lose one electron, but oxygen says, well, I'll take two. So what you really need is another Li positive. You need two of these to lose two electrons to one oxygen. And so that means then that the formula, and by the way, the formula for sodium chloride, of course, is NaCl. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. For lithium and oxygen, we're going to have the name lithium oxide. And now look, we don't say, because the formula is, as you can see, with the two lithiums, having to give up electrons to one oxygen, Li2O, that's not called dilithium oxide. That's for those molecules. That's for molecular compounds. That's for covalent bonding. Don't do that here with ionic. For ionic, quite simply, it's just lithium with oxygen. It forms this Li2O, and that's the only formula it can have, and therefore lithium oxide Li2O. Now, if you, if you get that part of it, Understand this here now for the iron 3 ion, which is saying, I'll lose three electrons, three negatives, and I'll have three more protons in my nucleus than electrons, so that's my three positive charge. I'll lose three electrons, and sulfur says, hey, you want to be in a compound with me? I'll gain two electrons. And iron saying, whoa, 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 hang on a second. I'm losing three, you're gaining two. You got to have some, another friend come over, and we've got to do an exchange between at least more than one of you. And then the sulfide is saying now, well, you know what though? Now I want four electrons and you can only give three. Oh, well then I'll bring another buddy in. So it's Fe with a three positive charge again. And now what we've done is we are going to lose a total of six electrons. But the sulfur is saying, ah, two at a time. Three S2 negatives will come together with two Fe3 positives. 
These will lose six electrons, and you have to have the same number of lost as gained, and you gain this many, which is six electrons. And so what's the formula? You need two Fe's for every three S's, so it's two Fe's for every three S's, and that's going to be iron. Now, hang on, it's sulfide, but on the periodic table you'll notice that there are some ions or elements that can have more than one charge. And ion, iron is like that. Iron can have a three positive charge and a two positive charge. Actually can have a lot of different charges, but those are the two most popular ones. Well, which iron was this? When you look at your periodic table and you see that some of these multivalent elements exist where they have more than one charge, you need to say which one you're using. And so here's iron, but it's the iron with the three positive charge that we're using. So this compound is called iron three, Roman numerals three, sulfide. Now we don't say that here because lithium only has one charge. So we just say lithium oxide. Anytime an element, usually the transition metals, right? And lots of them, and some of them don't, have multivalence like zinc, but lots of them do, like iron. Make sure you say which one you have. So remember, it's the same amount of electrons lost as gained. Now some people are going to say, hey man, just switch the charges and then you get your compound. Yeah, okay, but, but sometimes it gets a little tricky. Now look, if you are asked to put together the formula from the name, tin for sulfide, what you do is you go to your periodic table and you check and see what the charge is of the tin. Or do you have to? If you know that tin is Sn, and you're told it's an IV, which is Roman numeral for four, well, that's tin four positive right there. You don't even have to look it up. Sulfide, you might. It's in group number eight, 16 of the periodic table, or group 6A, and all of those have a two negative charge. Hey, by the way, these are all positive one, the alkali metals. Positive two right here for the alkali earth metals. All of these could have more than one charge. So you've got to check to make sure. Ones like zinc, though, and uh, silver, they only have one charge, ionic charge. Hey, over here, the, no the, the noble gases, they don't actually form ionic compounds at all. They have a charge of zero. So all of the halogens here, negative one. The group next to the halogen, starting with the oxygen, like the oxygen group, is all two negative. These are all three negative here, nitrogen and phosphorus. And then we've got carbon and silicon, which don't really form ionic compounds, so that group doesn't have a charge. But we go way over here to aluminum uh, and gallium. Those guys have three positive charges over there. So Sn with a four positive charge, sulfide is a two negative charge, and if you have that technique of, well, I just switch them charges and I get the ratio, look out, baby, because really, what do you see here? This is saying, I'm losing four electrons, and this says, well, now the two of us will gain those four electrons. Four positive, four negative total. The formula is SNS2, and it's not SN2S4. That's garbage chemistry, and don't do that, because you know that's going to be on the test. So be careful. Now, calcium chloride. Calcium is Ca with a two positive charge. It doesn't have another one. It's just calcium ion, two positive. You can check the chart to be able to make sure. And chloride is negative one. Now some people say, well, Mr. Letter, you just said, Mr. Letter, that's chem guy. You just said that chlorine, when it's by itself, you write Cl2 because it's diatomic. Yeah, when chlorine is a gas, it's Cl2. But when chloride ion is bonding, drop all that diatomic stuff and just use the charge on the table. There are a few diatomic elements, they're coming up later, but really, don't, don't get fooled here. It's just quite simply Cl with a negative one charge. How many of those do you need? Two of those for every one of those. CaCl2 is calcium chloride. And then, trying to be tricky, vanadium it five, that's vanadium V, so that's vanadium five, and that's vanadium with a five positive charge, and it comes together with oxide, which is O with a two negative, not O2, O with a two negative, and now how do you put that together? You're gonna say, well just switch them and that gives you the ratio. Yeah, okay, fine. 
But the point is, do you realize that you actually need two of these to lose 10 electrons to five of these which can gain 10? That's the whole concept. And so the formula for vanadium 5 oxide is V2O5. Okay, and by the way, all of these compounds are ionic compounds, so they are solid at room temperature. And molecular ones can be variable, like that's CO2, that's gas at room temperature. Water, <laughs> that's going to be a liquid at room temperature. And then there are solids at room temperature, like sulfur, which is S8. Now, let's put some of these together, these compounds, and make some chemical equations.